Hi everyone, it's Jakub Banko for Capturing Reality and I would like to welcome you to today's webinar. The topic of this webinar is processing of a cultural heritage site in the United Arab Emirates. It will be a tomb specifically. I won't try to pronounce the name of the tomb because I would probably be botched it. So instead of talking about it, let me just show you in the next slide instead. So here we have a bird's eye view uh, of the tomb taken from a drone. And at first glance, you might think that this is a very simple object. There shouldn't be any problems with the alignment or reconstruction. Well, actually, that is very far from the truth. I spent a couple of days trying to align everything together because I had multiple image sets. Uh, these image sets were acquired in different periods of the day. So some were acquired in the morning, some were acquired in the afternoon or in the evening. And I also had 3D laser scans. And the problem wasn't that uh, I was getting multiple components. I was getting just one single component, but this component was containing misalignments. Uh, and I think the reason for this is because the image sets were acquired in different times of the day. Uh, these misalignments were causing visible artifacts, both in the mesh surface and also in the texture. That is actually a good thing because now I can actually show you uh, what I did to fix these problems. So when you encounter these misalignments in your own projects, you will know what to do. I will go over the general workflow. Uh, I will not be describing in, a very, in much detail the tools that I am using. So that said, I assume that you already have some experience uh, using a reality capture, that you know the user interface. So if you are a total beginner, I recommend you to go watch some of our uh, beginner tutorials first and then this webinar will make much more sense to you. Okay, so now let's go over the main topics of this webinar. So first I will going to talk about the data capture. So I will introduce you the equipment that was used and also how, any, uh, how many images were used during the reconstruction because these are the things that uh, people are very interested in. This will be a combination of photogrammetry and terrestrial 3D laser scanning. I will go over the general workflow. So I will show you the settings I used. I will go over the alignment, reconstruction and texturing. I will be using the component workflow uh, because I had multiple image sets. I first aligned them separately, then export the components and bring them all together into a single uh, master project where I, where I merge the components together and then continue with the processing. I will show you some CLI examples. CLI stands for Command Line Interface. And I was using CLI scripts for batch processing because most of the processing on this project was done in the evening or in the night because I had other tasks during the day. I always prepared a simple script that I launched in the evening. And the next day in the morning when I come to my computer, uh, the processing would be finished and I can continue where I left off. Okay, so the main topic will be fixing the misalignments and I was using control points, but they were not enough. I had to tweak the control point weights to fix the misalignments. So I will go over that in detail. I was extensively using selections and image lists for disabling and enabling cameras. Uh, one reason for this was that I was trying to find and disable the misaligned cameras. Then I was uh, using selections for uh, reconstructing the mesh. That means that I tried to reconstruct the mesh only from laser scans and drone images to save time. And later for the texturing process, I was disabling the uh, laser scans because the, uh, the laser scans would degrade the quality of the final texture. So we will go over that. And in the end, I was using te texture reprojection because I was still having some blurry, blurry textures on the laser scan mesh and some artifacts. So what I did, I reconstruct a second mesh from photogrammetry only, textured it and transferred this texture to the laser scan mesh, which has uh, better geometry. I had to tweak, uh, I had to tweak the reprojection values a little bit, but uh, again, I will go over that. Uh, in detail uh, during the webinar. So now let's uh, let's take a look at the final result. Uh, so this this is a render directly from Reality Capture. 
Uh, this is actually the simplified mesh. It has around 40 million polygons and it has three 16K textures applied to it. So I had to use three 16K textures to get the optimal texel size to achieve the 100% quality, the best possible quality from the, uh, from the photos. Here is another render, again from Reality Capture, but this time in the solid view mode. So this is the best possible result I was uh, able to achieve. It could uh, still probably need some cleanup, but uh, it, is, it is much, much better than the first res initial result that I was getting. So in the next uh, few slides, I will show you uh, the misalignments and how I fix them. So this is one example of the many, many misalignments I had in the project. So a double wall. So this is clearly a huge misalignment. So to fix this, I was using control points and, and weights of the control points. So and this is what I get after the, after the uh, realignment. After I was uh, happy with the alignment, I proceeded with the reconstruction of the mesh. And that's when I noticed these artifacts. So these artifacts are again caused by misalignments, but this time the misalignments were subtle, not so large than in the first example. Uh, this, uh, this little mesh part that we are looking at right now uh, was reconstructed only from laser scans. And I was, all, and I was provided with pre-registered uh, laser scan positions. So I didn't tweak the or mess or play with the alignment of the laser scans. So that means that something was wrong in the laser scan alignment. So I had to uh, find the misaligned scan stations and disable them. So I was able to get this. Right away, you can see that uh, there is uh, far less detail because the misaligned scan stations were the closest uh, to the wall. So that's why there is less detail and also there is a little bit more noise on the wall. But this was the most consistent result that I was able to achieve from the laser scans. There were no large visible artifacts, only uh, the mesh was not so detailed and it was a little bit more noisy. But I decided to go with this result and continue. Then after I textured the mesh, I got these kinds of results. Well, it really doesn't look that great. And this was again caused by misalignments between the laser scans and between the photogrammetry. So then I uh, was thinking how to fix this. So I recreated uh, another mesh, but this time only from photogrammetry without any laser scans. I textured it and the textures were, were fine. And then I transferred the texture from the photogrammetry mesh to the laser scan mesh, which has better geometry. But uh, with the reprojection tool, I was able to achieve this quality of the textures. So much, much better. So for it depends on your use case. For someone, this result would be good enough, or but someone would probably need a little bit cleanup, a little bit tweaking of, of the textures. It really depends on your use case. But I was happy with the result and it was, it was much, much better than the first initial result. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the data capture. So equipment used. Uh, the data set uh, was provided by Global Digital Heritage. So I would like to use this opportunity to thank them for the data set. And they were using a DJI Phantom 4 Pro for acquiring the drone images. They used a Sony A7 Mark III with Sigma 14 millimeter lens for the ground images. They were using two Faro Focus scanners for the laser scanning, and they also used a GNSS receiver, uh, Trimble Geo 7X, for surveying the ground control points. And these ground control points were used for georeferencing the project. So in total, uh, they acquired 57 laser scans, 895 drone images, and uh, 1,698 uh, terrestrial images and together they survived five ground control points. Okay, that will be for the initial presentation. So now we can start reality capture and continue with the live demonstration. 
So let's let's launch Reality Capture right here by double clicking on the icon. And right now I, I reset the application before. So right now everything is uh, using the default settings. So first I want to bring in my, my settings that I use for these kinds of projects. There are multiple ways how you can do this. You can actually go over each settings. So we have the, workflow, uh, the application settings right here in the workflow tab. In the alignment tab, we have the alignment settings. In the reconstruction tab, we have the uh, reconstruction settings, texturing settings, and uh, we also have the unwrap settings, but uh, I cannot uh, activate it because we have no mesh. So you can go over each settings and set everything manually, but that is a huge waste of time. So I created presets for my projects. And to, and to apply these settings, I would go to the workflow tab, go to the application settings, go to the global settings and import. Okay, so let's do that right now. Yes, import of global settings will override your current settings. Are you sure you want to perform this action? Yes, I'm totally sure. And I do not want to show this again. Okay, so let me find my settings folder. Yes, global settings, yeah, cool. yeah that's my name. So these are my settings, I'll click on open. And, and the application needs to restart because I'm changing the cache location from the system temp file to my dedicated SSD drive. Okay, so we'll, it will need to restart. So let's wait for Reality Capture to restart. So this is my blank project. And now when I open the settings again, we can see that something's changed. Right away, you can see that the cache location changed to my G drive. This, that is my dedicated SSD drive. And another thing that I, I changed here is the import settings. By default, the group calibration by EXIF is set to no. I like to set this to yes for the first initial alignment uh, because uh, this way Reality Capture will treat uh, the images from uh, each camera with the same lenses as the same group. So they will have the same calibration parameters. For the next alignment, I will, I will ungroup them to fine tune the alignment, but I will, I will talk about it in detail during the alignment. Another thing that I changed here, coordinate system. Yes, this is changed uh, by default. It's the local coordinate system Euclidean. Uh, this project, um, is in WGS84 because the ground control points were also surveyed in this coordinate system and the output system is set to WGS84 UTM zone 40N because that is the corresponding zone to the area that we are working in. Okay. Uh, one more uh, one more thing. If you want to import your settings but only only you want to, for example, you want to change only the application settings or you only want to change the alignment settings right here. So you will not use the import uh, global settings, but you can use this tool. You can reset the settings here or you can load the settings and this tool will only change the alignment settings. So here you can see again, I have some presets, alignment settings, Jakub, reconstruction settings, Jakub, texturing settings, unwrap settings, and so on. Uh, so if you had different presets, but you want to keep, for example, the reconstruction settings the same and the application settings, you just want to say, change the up alignment settings, you would use this method. But this time it's totally the same thing. So I will click on cancel. Okay, let's quickly go over the, yeah, let's quickly go over the alignment settings. So I will show you what I changed. Max features per image, uh, 10,000, that's the same thing. Uh, max features per image, I actually use the default value. So I will keep it at 40,000. Image overlap, I always use uh, image overlap set to low. It's uh, just uh, from my experience, this is, the, this is the best way to go. But you may have a different experience. Another thing that I changed, max feature reprojection error, uh, by default, it's set to two pixels. Yeah, so we can change that too. But for the uh, second and third alignment, I always try to uh, 
lower the max feature reprojection error. So for the first initial alignment, I would use two. Camera prior settings, all of all of this is the same because uh, the terrestrial images have no priors. The drone images have priors, but mm, the the GNSS receiver on board of the drone is uh, less accurate than a survey grade GNSS receiver. So the accuracy, XYZ accuracy, 10 meters, uh, that's, that's, that should be okay. And okay, for control point prior settings, uh, I will leave this at default because uh, Global Digital Heritage didn't provide the accuracy of the surveyed ground control points, but uh, this is pretty reasonable, five centimeters in the in the uh, horizontal accuracy and 10 centimeters into vertical accuracy. I think that it, it should be even better. Okay, a draft mode, nothing. And in the advanced, I changed I changed the distortion model from brown three to brown three with tangent tangential, and I will keep the preselector features to ten thousand. That is also the default value. A detector sensitivity. That's the default value to medium. Uh, one tip: if you are using only drone images and you are getting the banana effect, if you are using drone photogrammetry, you probably know what I'm talking about. To fix this banana effect, I recommend you to always group your images together and use brown 3 with tangential to distortion model. This will fix it. Okay. The reconstruction settings should be all set to default values right now. Let's just check really quickly. GPU to use, yes, my GeForce RTX 2070. That's set to true, okay. Image downscale, previous downscale is set to four. Normal model is set to two by default. Uh, when I was reconstructing the photogrammetry mesh, I was using the image downscale set to four. So it wouldn't take so, so long. But again, I will get to that. This is the defaults, mesh calculation defaults, preview model, use sparse point cloud, yes. I didn't change any of these values. And here, mesh filtering, model import. Yeah, these are all the defaults. I didn't change a thing here. For the texturing, let's check the texture settings and let's check the default unwrap parameters. Yes, I changed this. I changed this maximal texture resolution to 16K and style by, by default is set to maximal texture count and it's set to one like this, but I will use the fixed texel size and optimal texel size to get the 100% of the 100% quality of the texture. So if I change something, I will go back here and I will explain you why I change it. So now we can bring in the images. So there are multiple ways how to do this. You can go to the workflow tab and use one of these icons, use the inputs icon or, 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 the, or the folder icon, or you can drag and drop. Uh, the images straight here into user interface. Uh, lately, I'm using a lot of shortcuts. So the shortcut for at folder is control plus shift plus enter. So I will press control shift plus enter and navigate to my folder, my work folder, photogrammetry. Yes, this is the tomb image set. And uh, let's use this tomb interior. Uh, Global Digital Heritage provided me both with RAWs and JPEGs. And uh, I, I proceeded with the JPEGs. Uh, I didn't tweak, I didn't, I didn't make any changes to the RAWs and exported the JPEGs. I just used the JPEGs they provided me. Okay, so select the folder, click on OK. And right away, you can see the imported images right here in the 2DS view. When I change this to 1DS, we can see how many images were imported. So 779 images. So the next thing you would do, you just would just go to uh, launch the alignment either from the workflow tab right here, click on align images, or you can do the same from the alignment tab here, align images, or again, I'm using shortcuts. So I will, I would press F6 to align the images. And then you would have to wait a couple of minutes for the alignment to finish. But I actually didn't, uh, did, uh, I didn't work like this. As I mentioned, I will show you some CLI scripts. So 
What I did next, I didn't even save the project. You could save the project and then uh, and then launch the project from the CLI script and uh, run the alignment like that. But what I did instead is I exported an image list. So I clicked on this. I created a special folder just for the image lists. Let me just find it. It should be yes here, image lists. And I created an image list. And I will show you what uh, what it did. So I will just keep the default name images dot image list. Click on save. And let me check. Let me show you what it what it's containing. So let's go to pro, uh, not settings projects image lists here. And when I open it, well, it's actually what it says it is. So it's it's an list of images image list. And I will use this image list later for selecting the images. It can really uh, speed up things because imagine that you have uh, 3000 cameras aligned together and now from multiple image sets and now you have to select them. So in this case, image lists are the way to go. So I exported the image list for each, each image, uh, for each image set. So I will delete this one. It's the one I created now. I have the all inputs image list. I have the laser scans image list, drone image, uh, drone images image list, terrestrial images from the afternoon, from the morning, and then there's the tomb interior image list. And I prepared the CLI script. Uh, let me check the CLI script. It should be right here. Alignment advanced. Yes. Let me open it. And let's get over this uh, script really quickly. So the first line will set the the reality capture installation folder to uh, to the path. The second line will set my working folder as an environment variable. So when I'm saving or when I'm saving the project, opening the project, I don't have to always write this whole path. I will just, instead of uh, the whole path, I would just use this cesta. Cesta means uh, path in Slovak language. So I use uh, used this word. So first I would, uh, the script uh, would launch a reality capture, created a new scene, set app group calibration exif to true. This means that uh, this is the, this is the same setting like, like this setting I will show you in the user interface, workflow settings import this group calibration by exif it's already set to yes so reality capture would remember this but i i just put it here uh, just in case i was just copy and pasting because i had a lot of cli scripts so i was copy and pasting and building building this script really quickly set structure for motion images overlap to low yeah that is uh, that is this setting right here alignment settings image overlap low. The next setting set structure from motion max feature reprojection error to two. Yeah, that is the default value. Structure from motion detector sensitivity medium. That is again the default value. Set structure from motion distortion model. This is brown three with tangential two. Yeah, so by default, it's just brown three. Set project coordinate system EPSG 4326. That is WGS 84. And this is the output coordinate system. This is the UTM 40N zone. Then it would add it would add all of the images from this image list. So this is this is the drone image list. It would add all of the images. It would align with the alignment settings that were set. After the alignment, it would save the project here. I would import the image selection this time to select all of the cameras. Set prior calibration, calibration, uh, calibration group to minus one. This would ungroup them. And I would also ungroup them from the prior lens group. And align again. This would fine tune the alignment. And after this alignment, I would save the project and quit RC. Then it would again open RC, create a new scene and continue with the next image set. So the next image set is the terrestrial images from the afternoon. Uh, I don't have to repeat this set uh, set uh, all of these values because 
they were already set. And I would just, again, add, it, add the images, align, save, select all of them, ungroup them, align again, save and quit. And it would do for all of the image sets. Here, this uh, last uh, reality capture instance would be create a new scene, add the image list from the, this is the laser scans. I was already provided with the LSPs from Global Digital Heritage, align and save. There was no need for any kind of realignment because uh, they were imported as, as fixed. Because I was assume, uh, because I assumed they pre-registered the laser scans in their own laser scanning application, and that would be more accurate than uh, the alignment from uh, RC. Save, quit, and this next, and then this last command would shut down the computer. So it, maybe this took uh, maybe one or two hours, and after that the computer would shut down and it wouldn't run during the whole night. So after this script, in the morning. I had these one, two, three, four, five, five projects. Let me show you the results right now. Uh, I am running multiple instances of reality capture. If you're not aware from version, from version, let me just check. 01933, you can uh, run up to four instances of reality capture at once. So if you didn't know that, so this is a new feature. And it is actually quite good because now if you are running some kind of processing and one of your clients come to your office and you want to show them something else, you can do that right now. You can keep running your processing and you can open another reality capture instance and open another project. So that's what I'm doing right here. So these are multiple stages of the processing. So this instance is containing just the laser scans. So this is the laser scan component. Uh, our support team is uh, frequently receiving emails that the laser scan point cloud is sparse. It is not so dense like in their laser scanning application. Uh, you don't have to worry about that at all because uh, all of the points are stored in the memory and all of the points will be used during the reconstruction. So uh, if you don't see all of your points after the alignment, you only see a sparse point cloud, everything is fine. You don't have to worry about that at all. So these were the laser scans. Now let's open, for example, this tomb interior. It will take a couple of seconds. Yes, so this is the interior. Again, 778 images were aligned from total of 779 images. So one image wasn't aligned. And you can actually check which wasn't, uh, which which image was not uh, aligned. Uh, if I change the 1DS to 2DS right here and go to the scene context tab, uh, but this uh, view needs to be highlighted by this uh, blue outline and you will click on show unregistered. Here you can check the image uh, that wasn't uh, aligned. Let me change the layout to this layout, one plus two. And let me drag and drop here. Yeah, so this image wasn't aligned. And it actually, it, it's pretty sharp. Maybe there wasn't enough overlap between this image and the other images. So that's the reason why it didn't align together. Okay, so this is the Tom interior. Let's check the next component, terrestrial images morning. Let's open that. Yeah, so this is the alignment. Let's check how many images were aligned. So all of them, all of them were aligned together. And even here you can see the two components that were created. So this was the first alignment uh, when the, all, all of the cameras were grouped. Then, uh, they, uh, then the images were ungrouped, aligned again. And after the fact, I, I just renamed the component uh, from zero and one in brackets to terrestrial images morning. I renamed them because uh, when I was exporting the components, it would already have this name assigned. Uh, but I will show you how to export a component uh, in a couple of minutes. Okay, so now let's check the next component that was created. It was these terrestrial images afternoon. And right away, you will see uh, little, little changes in the color. 
and that's because uh, it was shot in a different period of the day. So these ones are afternoon and the first ones were in the morning, I think. 500, uh, so for the first component, 540 images out of 542 images were aligned. And then the next alignment added one more image. And now when I, I select this component, because right now the first one is selected by this uh, marker right next to the name, let's check which wasn't aligned. Again, highlight this section, this tab, uh, and go to the scene. Oh, I need to change it to two Ds. And click on unregistered. So this image was not unregistered. Yeah, and I see why, because it is blurry. And uh, there's a bag over here and a bottle of water. Yeah, so it makes sense that this image wasn't aligned because it's really not that great. Okay, let's open another component. So the drone images, okay. Let's open these drone images. And you will see uh, something will be different in this component. Let me zoom out. Yeah, you will see these lines. So if you are using reality capture, so you probably know what these are. These are the residuals. Uh, they show the difference between the prior position and the adjusted position after the alignment. Uh, because and these are actually georeferenced, and you can see that right here in the one these this marker. When I hover my mouse cursor over the marker, you will see georeference. So the images were containing georeference, and also the components were ge are georeferenced, both of them. Uh, actually, I turned off the georeference later when I was merging all of the components together, but I will show you how I did that because I was only using the georeference from the ground control points. Okay, I'm not sure if this is the last component, so let me check real quickly. Interior, yeah, those are those all. Of, th that is all of them. So now I will show you what I uh, what I would do next. I want to export this component. I would go to the alignment tab, export re uh, registration. But I need to have the proper component selected. Again, the first one is selected, so I want this one. Little change. Let's wait a few seconds. Okay, it's changed. So I would go to export registration and components, and here are my exported components. So I would put in the name. Uh, the name is the same like the name of the component right here, and I would just click on save. But again, I didn't use this way. I wrote a simple CLI script to do this for me because. I am very lazy and I like to batch process. So let me show you the script real quickly. So here I have alignment component export. Let me open it in Notepad. So here, again, this is just copy paste, setting the paths. Again, uh, reality capture would load, uh, launch. It would load the project, select the component zero, uh, 01 because uh, the first component was component zero, the next component was zero one, and then rename the select component to Malayatum drone images. So this is the same name as you see here. It's the same name. Then export the selected component, save the project and quit. And I did this for all of the components. And this saved, uh, saved a few minutes because, uh, for example, the laser scan component, it was very large and uh, it's, uh, I didn't have to wait and sit by my computer to wait for it to finish. Okay. After I had all of my com components exported, I opened a new project. So let's open a new project. And I imported all of the components to Reality Capture. So I'd go either from the workflow tab and import component, or you can go or you can do it from the alignment tab, import component. And I would select all of my components and uh, and uh, import them. I will just select one of them because I don't want it to take too long. So this one, this is the smallest one, so I will use this one. 
let's wait for the component to import. So it took just one second, that's great. And you will know a component is imported when you see this, this star next to the component name. So imported component. So I, so I brought all of the components together and then I used this tool from the alignment tab, this merge components tool. And this tool is actually a new feature. Uh, in the previous versions of Reality Capture, you would have to go to the alignment settings. And the option is actually missing from here, but in the advanced, uh, in this advanced section, you would have merge components only. And by default, it is set to no. And when you set to yes, it will only merge the components. It will not add new images to the components. So uh, we decided that this was confusing and sometimes you would leave it on. And then when you start a new project, brought in your images, then the, uh, the first alignment, you would have zero images aligned because it would expect just to align the components together. So we removed it from here and bring it right here into the alignment tab. So we just click, click, uh, click on this. Uh, one important thing to check is when you click on the, uh, for example, this first input, uh, you need to check these features, feature source, uh, features, feature source here, right, right here. So when you, uh, you have three options, you can use merge using overlaps. You would want to use this option when you have the same cameras in multiple components. But uh, at this moment, I, I, uh, I don't have that. I don't have, uh, multi I don't have the same camera and multiple components. Okay. So I cannot use this option. Then you have these two other options, use component features or use all image features. So use all image features, uh, would take uh, a lot of time because it would use literally, like it says, all of the image features, but instead I just want to use the component features to merge the components together. So this was the, this was in this case, this was the best option to use. So I use this option and after, after that, I would just click on merge components. So let me close this project and open the project that is containing all of the, all of the merge components. So it, it is this one, all components. And right away, and you can see the part uh, with the misalignment. So right here, here are the double walls. So to fix this, I will go into place control points. Um, but it can be a little challenging in this situation when you have uh, double walls. So I will show you how I manage to place the control points. So first, I will isolate the misaligned part. Um, to do that, you can place the uh, clipping box tool but what I prefer to do is first uh, set up a reconstruction region. I will set it on the grid. So I will use the same part right here as I, uh, as I used before for placing the control points. So I will, I will just place the reconstruction region on the grid, adjust its bottom and top. Like this, uh, I can rotate it a little bit. Uh, so I will jump to the top view by pressing two on the numeric keyboard, or you can do it from the scene context tab right here in display. So I will rotate it a little bit like this, move it, adjust it. I'll take a look from the side, from the left view by pressing four on the numeric keyboard. Okay, this is great press zero to go back to the perspective view. And now I will create a clipping box from the reconstruction region. So to do that, I go to the scene clipping box and create, uh, create from reconstruction region like this. So, and everything is gone right now. I can even adjust it a little bit more, edit the clipping box like this. Great. Now, uh, first, I want to figure out uh, which uh, type points or these points belong to which camera, or is it the, is this from laser scans or is this photogrammetry? So let's let's figure out that first. 
So I need to select a couple of these points. Uh, I can use these point selection tools right here. I can use the rectangular tool or the lasso tool. I prefer the lasso tool. It can be also activated by pressing D on the keyboard. Select a couple of points, for example here. Yeah, that's okay. And now uh, to disable the tool, press D again, or you can also press the right mouse button to disable the tool. Or you can click also here. Now we have a couple of points highlighted and I will use the find images tool. And we have seven inputs selected. Let me zoom out in the 3D view. Yes, and we can see that those are actually the laser scans. So this second wall, this, uh, this wall is from the laser scans and this is from the photogrammetry. And it also makes sense because um, this wall has more noise. You can, I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but there are some floating points. So, and that is the noise from the photogrammetry. Laser scans are nice, nice and clean. Great. So now I want to place a control point on this wall find I need to find a good spot so let me change the layout to yeah, I can use this layout yeah and uh, I like to keep this uh, top right corner as 3d and all of the rest as 2d's and now I want to drag and drop these seven selected images into a 2d view so I will hover over the selected image press control and drag and drop it right here. And now when I use the right arrow or left arrow key, I can browse them. So let me use the right arrow key first one, but I need to be in this view, of course. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, I'm at the end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So I'm browsing only the selected cameras right now. So it is, it, it's making uh, a lot easier to place the control points. So let me find a good spot to place the control point. And I like this, I like this dark spot right, right over here. So let's place a new control point right here. To activate the control points tool, uh, I can go to the alignment tab and uh, click here on control points tool. Or I can use the shortcut F3, which I prefer because it's, it's, it is much quicker. So I will press F3 and click right here. So it created a new control point number three and it is marked only on one image. Let me disable the tool for now and let's find another image. So let's use the right arrow key and uh, Hmm. I I need to find a similar a similar feature to actually figure out where it, where it should be. Ah, maybe here. I think this is the spot right here. Yeah. So again, uh, I can press F three make sure that this uh, point is highlighted or I can just drag and drop like this. See, and now we have, now we have two, uh, two images marked with this control point and I got some suggestions. So we can actually check the suggestions when I click on the first image right here, the blue marker, so this blue marker is corresponding this to this 2D view. And now when I use the up and down arrow key, I will just browse uh, or, or go through these five uh, images. Arrow down. So here's a suggestion. Here's another one. Here is another one. Oh, this, this one is already marked. And this is the last one. Uh, this is hard to see. This one's marked. This one is also hard to see, but maybe this one should be okay. Yeah, so the error is under one pixel, so I can keep this. 
to get rid of these two, I will just, uh, it needs to be highlighted and I will just go and clear suggestions to get rid of them. Okay, now I need to place this same control point on the next wall, uh, on the first wall. So the wall from the photogrammetry. So what I will do, I will try to, I will activate the uh, point selection tool by pressing D again, make a selection right here. Disable the tool by pressing D again, and now click on Find Images. Yeah, and you can see that now I have a couple of images highlighted that can see this spot. So again, I will just uh, press Control and drag and drop the images right here. highlight the window and now when I use the left and right arrow keys I will just uh, go through all of this of all of these selected images so I have to find the same spot and place the control point right over there so I will use this image and I can use this image as a reference so we have this large brick with this color and I need to find it right here in the images so let me go. These are too far away. I want to select one of the images that is closer to the wall. So let me go back. Let me zoom in. Where is it? Yeah, this looks like this part. And here is the dot. There is the dot right over there. Okay, so again, I can just uh, activate the tool, make sure this point is highlighted and uh, because right now it is not highlighted. If I click here, it will create a new control point. See, control point four. I don't want that. So we'll just delete it. And I will drag and drop this control point right here. But you have to, you have to hold down the control key. Otherwise you would move the control point in this image. Okay, so let's find another one. So this one is good. I like it. And now uh, I should get more suggestions any minute if I place multiple control points. So again here. And you can see that uh, the errors are in the red and this is uh, because of the misalignment. These errors shouldn't be so big. So let's let's find more images and from different different perspectives. Maybe let's try a maybe let's try a drone image. Right, let me go through the images really quickly. Yeah, this is the spot right here again. Let's drag and drop. Yeah, and now I started to get suggestions. So let me go through the suggestions. So I will click here and I will mark see it's it's a little bit far away so and now when I I'm still holding the left mouse button and now when I press the down arrow key it will confirm the point and it will switch uh, to the next one like this again down arrow key again again oh this is not good so when I release the left mouse button now, it will mark it, but I know it's bad, so I will delete it right away. Delete this item. Maybe I can try this one. Right here. And because these suggestions are so far away from the actual point, you can. this is the indication of the misalignment. So... This is the way I placed all of the control points. I will I will go back to the one plus one view right now, make it a 3D view, and clear the clipping box. I want to clear the clipping box. Write this. I will clear the re reconstruction region, and this is how I placed control points in multiple spots that were very misaligned. So I placed some here. I also place some here. You can see that there is also a misalignment right here. Yeah, 
this point should be right over here. And then I run the realignment with the default weights. And actually nothing changed. It was, it was the same way. Then what I did, I selected all of the control points like this. Wait, uh, it's different value because this is the new one. Uh, I will get rid of it right now like this. And right now they are set to 100 because I tried 50 and 50 was still not enough to correct the misalignment. So I went all the way to 100 and after the alignment with the 100 weights, I got this component. So this is the misaligned one. And now I will try to switch to the uh, realigned one and you will see the differences. It will take a while because uh, uh, probably the laser scan component is uh, the one that is slowing all of the things down. Again, I have some clipping box here, so I will clear it. So let me go to the scene context tab and clear the clipping box right, right there. And see, the misalignments are gone. There are no double walls. So I thought that everything was fine, but there were still some, some uh, subtle misalignments present that caused the artifacts in the meshing and in the texturing. Okay, so after I had this realigned component and you see that uh, there is no marker here, uh, there is no georeference. Let me just make this wider. There is an, n no georeference, and uh, that's because when I was merging the components together, I selected all of the drone images, and I can actually do that right now. I can actually do that, and uh, this will be one of the uh, use cases of for the image list. So I want to select all of the drone shots. So I could <laughs> I could actually go and select them manually using the camera lasso tool, which is activated by pressing C and select them like this, then add to the selection by now I'm holding down the control key and adding to the selection, but this is uh, not the way to go. So I will press control D to deselect everything, right click to deactivate the camera lasso tool. And let's use the, let's use the image list. So I will go to the I will go to the workflow tab and here I have the image selection. Click on that and let's go to our folder with our image lists. And that's right here. I want to select the drone shots. These are the ones. Yeah. Click open. And now all of my drone shots were selected. And the way I disabled the uh, georeference from the cameras was right here. So I have 894 selected inputs and right here in the prior pose, previous, previously or originally there was position and orientation or just position, I'm not sure right now, position and orientation probably. And right now the residuals are huge, <laughs> but uh, because the whole project shifted, because right now it is not a georeference, it's, it's just shifted into an unknown place, but we will fix this. But this is the way how I uh, disabled the georeference from the drone shots. So I, so I put this absolute pose to unknown and the residuals disappeared. Now I want to georeference the, this, uh, this alignment. So I need to bring in my ground control points. To import my ground control points, I can do it from the workflow tab using this uh, import ground control or, or there is this option right here in the alignment tab, right here, import ground control. So I will click on that. Let me find my ground control points. Uh, I already prepared this text file. Let me open it first just to show you what is uh, what. Uh, what is the format of the points. So here, right click 
open with notepad. So it's just five points. Uh, this is the label of the points of so points five, four, six, seven, and eight. And uh, these are the coordinates in WGS84. So this is the longitude, this is the latitude, and this is the ellipsoid altitude. And uh, they are separated by space. And I, what I like to do is also incorporate this in the name of the file. So it's a GCP WGS84 underscore latitude underscore longitude underscore altitude and the separator is space. Just uh, not to make mistakes. Uh, this is just, uh, this works for me. Okay, so let me close this. So I will click on this open. So uh, now choose the file format. So I need to switch this. So it's name and I, it, it, it's name, longitude and latitude. And uh, I need to change it to name, like latitude, longitude, altitude. And uh, value separator, reality capture actually uh, can determine the separator automatically. So it knows that uh, the space is the separator. Ignore first line, no, because uh, I had there wasn't there wasn't a header in the text file, so this can be left to no. And uh, the coordinate system is correct. And the position accuracy, these values are from the alignment tab, the default values. If you remember, I mentioned that uh, Global Digital Heritage didn't provide me the accuracy, so I left it at default. And now I will click OK. And they were imported right here. So now what I need to do is place these uh, control, uh, these ground control points uh, in the uh, uh, in the in the component. So what I did, there are multiple ways how you can, because right now you don't know where's the north, where's the south. You don't know how how it is orientated. Uh, you would know that if I if I let the uh, the approximate georeference from the drone shots. But I didn't use it right now, so it will be a little, little much, uh, little challenging for me to place the control points. But I can handle it. Okay, so let's try to change the uh, the view again. Let's keep the top right corner as a 3D view. Let's change the bottom right corner to a map view. I will zoom in to the ground control points and. Uh, now, when I rotate this 3D view a little bit, now uh, I can align it to the north. And now I, I have a, an idea uh, where the ground control points should be. Okay, so ground control point number five should be somewhere around here. So let's try to find it and let's try to place it. Uh, I will activate the control point tool again, highlight uh, ground control point number five and hover with my mouse cursor over the point cloud. And here in the bottom left uh, view, I have a 2D view and I get live previews of the uh, of my 3D cursor actually on the point cloud. So it's, it is displaying uh, images that can see the place that my, my, my mouse cursor is over. So here we have the ground control point number five I don't have to place it really that accurate right now. So maybe, okay, I will place it here because I will refine its position later. Okay, so that would be control point number five. Then I would add a control point, uh, ground control point number six. It should be somewhere, somewhere around here. Let's, let's try to place it as well. So again, activate the tool, highlight the the corresponding ground control point and let's let's try to find it and actually here it is i can place it I can zoom it oh no it's actually number eight yeah i'm blind yes this is number eight so no i have to delete this two suggestions highlight number eight and again place it right here we'll zoom out a little bit like this okay so and then i would continue with the other ground control points so let me disable the control point tool by right clicking 
And now I will select the first suggestion for ground control point number five. Uh, but I need to make sure that this 2D view is displaying the blur cursor, blue cursor, right, like this. Okay, and now I can refine its position. So I would click on it, move it to the right spot and confirm it by pressing uh, the down arrow key. It would uh, confirm its position and select the next image like this, like this. And now uh, RC gave me multiple other suggestions so I can go over all of them. This is actually a laser scan and it's visible. Yeah, that's great because uh, they were probably uh, placing and removing the ground control points around the time they were using the laser scans because I noticed that some laser scan positions do not contain the ground control points. So, but uh, I guess we're lucky at this time. So I can place it here and go through all of the drone shots. I will not come all of them, only, only a few of them like this. But basically it's the same thing like placing the control points. Like this, like this, and so on. I will not go over all of them. And again, I also increased the weight of the ground control points. So I need to have my control point selected. And here, here's the weight. So again, I increased it to 100. And that's it. Uh, after I placed all of the ground control points, I ran the alignment again and saved the alignment. And after that, I was continuing with the reconstruction. So you would go to the uh, reconstruction tab, uh, set the reconstruction region. So I just wanted to reconstruct this, uh, this, uh, this tomb in the middle of our point cloud. I didn't want the other surroundings. So I, uh, I can actually demonstrate it. I set the reconstruction region. Let's try automatically. Okay, not bad. Let me just change to the one plus one view. So we have a larger 3D view. Uh, I will switch to the top view by pressing two on the new numeric keyboard. Adjust the position like this, like this from one of the side views so we're not cropping anything out so and this was my reconstruction region and i uh, now i could just click on normal detail and the reconstruction would run with the downsize of the original images uh, set to two uh, I actually didn't disable any cameras from the reconstruction for the first reconstruction i mean because i was confident that the alignment is fine so what I actually did, I uh, exported the, uh, the reconstruction region. I will show you how I did that. I went to the reconstruction tab, export reconstruction region. And the reason why I did this is because I used a, another CLI script for the, for the reconstruction. And uh, I used a command to load this reconstruction region. I can show you the script right now. Let me just open my file explorer. Let's find the CLI folder. Here is, here is the batch file reconstruction. So let me open it with notepad and let's check it out. So again, this is just copy and paste uh, to define the paths. So I would run reality capture, load the project uh, reconstruction because I saved it as a reconstruction.rc project. I would select the component georeferenced because after this alignment, after after this realignment, I created an I created another component and I rename it to, to georeferenced. So it would select that component. Then set reconstruction region. Yes, it would load the reconstruction region that I exported. Then it would calculate the mesh with the normal detail. After the reconstruction, it would save the project select the model number one because th th there will be only one model but i put this command there anyway rename the selected model to source 
then select largest model component. Uh, it would select the, uh, if you have any floating parts around, some small parts uh, in the mesh, it would select the largest connected part. And then I would invert the selection to select the small floating parts. And then I use the remove, remove selected triangles command to get rid of them because I don't want them uh, in the next steps. After this, it would save another, pro it would save again the same project to reconstruction.rc project, import image selection. And this is, and this is the image selection for the laser scans. And after that, it would disable them from the texturing. So the command is enable texturing and coloring to false. So the laser scans would not degrade the quality of the texture. I want the texture to be created only from photogrammetry. Then I set the unwrap uh, max uh, unwrap style. No, this is the unwrap uh, resolution to 16K and wrap style to fixed texel size unwrap fixed texel size type zero. This means the optimal. So I would get hundred percent quality just right here. And then I would set texture recolor after texturing to false because I don't want my mesh to be recolored. I'm, I'm just not used to work. Uh, I'm not used to working with vertex uh, colors. I prefer working with textures and then it would use this calculate texture command to calculate the texture and save the project save the project and quit RC and then shut down the computer. And in the morning, I was checking the results and uh, there were there were the artifacts and the mesh surface and also the texture was terrible. So that's uh, when I decided to pick a smaller part of the mesh and start experimenting. And now I, I will show you what I did. Okay. So let me close this. And I can also close this project right now. Uh, by the way, if you are interested in uh, CLI more, you can always uh, press F1 to open the help view, help view. And right down here, you have the command line interface, all CLI commands. These are the CLI setting keys and values and so on. If you click, for example, this, here are all the commands that I used in my CLI scripts because I memorized some of them, but of course not all of them. So sometimes I need to go here and check and just, and I just copy and paste these uh, commands to build up my scripts. But once you get used to it, you will just copy and paste your scripts, modify them. And actually it, I like it more than working with the user interface. It's not always possible, but uh, when it is, I prefer to work this way. Okay. So let me go back. I can close this project. I do not want to save it. And now I will open the project with the reconstruction. So right now you can see that I have multiple models in here because I was doing some experimenting. So, but I will show you basically what I did. So let me, let me disable this model. Let me view the type points. Okay. Right. Like this. Let me clear the reconstruction region as well. Okay. So I decided that I will make my experiments in this part with this small opening or, or a window. So I, first I, rec I created a reconstruction region. So I went to set reconstruction region. Let's make it on a grid again, like this. I will adjust it. I will adjust it from the top view like this, like this. And, and the back part of the reconstruction region, I put it almost in the middle of the wall because I, I wanted to only play or experiment with the front side of the wall. So this is from the top view like this. this and like this. Okay. And here you can see multiple experiments. So I tried lasers plus photos only. Then I tried lasers only. Then I tried lasers only 
plus disabling uh, scan, uh, scanned uh, station that was right here because it was causing the it was causing the 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 artifacts in the mesh surface and then i have lasers plus photos uh, plus the disabled laser scan position and i found that the lasers only test minus uh, the one scan station was the best result but I, I will show you how i disabled and enabled the cameras right now so let me just make the cameras a little bit bigger so we can see them like this maybe a little bit bigger like this so i will select all of them by pressing ctrl a and here uh, you can see that i have uh, almost 3000 inputs and enable alignment meshing texturing coloring and uh, weight in texturing all have different values because i was tweaking all of these values and some should be even disabled let me check let me uh, deselect everything by pressing ctrl d yes these red cameras are totally disabled from anything from from the reconstruction and also from the texturing so you can see that i only enabled the cameras that were in close proximity of the tomb so but i will enable all of them right now i will select all of them and press ctrl r and again because uh, the first uh, control R disabled all of them and the second control R enabled all of them. So now when I press, press control D or, or I can also deselect them by this command. Where is it here? Deselect the shortcut is control D. Now, none of the cameras are in red. Everything is enabled. And I will select them again, all of them and enable everything. I will enable them in alignment enabled in meshing enabled in texturing okay so everything is great so now i created a clipping box from the reconstruction region so i went to the scene create clipping box create from reconstruction region like this okay deselect everything by pressing ctrl d now i use the uh, select point tool so from the alignment tab point lasso tool or pressing D and I selected these points I disabled the tool and I use the find images to select the images that can see these points so these are the images then I invert the selection like this by pressing ctrl plus I or by pressing this command invert like this and I disabled them again, so press Ctrl R and they are disabled. Great. I can uh, deselect everything again. And the next thing I did was to select all of the laser scans and I did that using the uh, image list. So let's select them. Let's go to the workflow tab, and import image selection, use the laser scans, open, again, invert the selection, like this, and again, disable all of the images by pressing Ctrl R. Now when I deselect them, so everything is disabled except a few scan stations that can see these points. And actually, when I click here on inputs, you can see that all of the images are disabled. All of them. And from the point cloud rig here, only some of them are enabled. That can see these visible points. So this is the way I used uh, image selections to use as few inputs as possible to make uh, faster experiments because if uh, i would calculate this small mesh part with everything it would take much much longer and i didn't really want to waste uh, any more time because i was already spending too much time on this project so let me show you act the actual results so let me highlight the lasers only test 
Yes. Let's go to the solid view. Yeah, we are in the solid view, but I want to disable the type ones like this. Okay, so uh, you, you already saw this in the beginning of this webinar in the presentation. And the other best, this is the lasers only plus one scan offset of test. So I found this to be the most consistent one. So I decided to go with the laser scans only. But here you can see that the top of the wall or of the tomb was not visible from any laser scan position because they were at ground level. So I needed to enable a couple of drone shots to, to reconstruct even the top. So we can start all over again. So let's, let's uh, clear the clipping box. Let's view the tie points. Let's disable the mesh. Let's select Let's select all of the laser scans, actually. Yes, let's do it like that. And I don't have to use the image list, actually, because they are grouped nicely in under this point cloud rigs. So I will select the first one, scroll down, uh, and select the bottom one, but I need to hold down shift key like this. So now all of them are selected. And now I will press Ctrl R. It will disable all of them. I will press Ctrl R again, and this will enable all of them. Next, what I did is to select all of the drone shots and enable all of them first. So I would do that with an image list. So I will go to the workflow tab, import image selection, select the drone images. So it's this one. Enable all of them. And yeah, there should be all enabled. Yes. And then I went to a side view, oh, not the top view, the side view. And I decided that I will disable all the, sh all the cameras that are above this point or above this line. So I would deselect everything by pressing Control D uh, using the camera lasso or by pressing C on the keyboard, I would select all of these like this, like this and press control R to disable them. Disable the tool, deselect. And now only the laser scans and only these drone shots will be used for reconstructing the mesh. Okay, I almost forgot. I forgot to disable also the scan station because this was the one that was causing the artifacts around this uh, around this uh, window. So I will quickly disable them. Press Control C for the camera lasso. Select and press Control R to disable them. Great. Oh, and I almost forgot another thing. I will show you one tip. For example, when I was uh, making the selection for the drone shots, so let me let me do the selection one more time. I will again activate the camera lasso, select all of these cameras like this. And now if I press Control Shift F1, Reality Capture will remember this selection. So I will uh, deselect all of them. And now when I press Control Shift and one, I will select the saved selection before. So this is a great tip and, and it was very useful when doing such selections as I was doing in this project because uh, uh, later during texturing, I was doing multiple selections. I was selecting the uh, outside, the, the cameras that were further away from the tomb. I didn't totally disable them. I just lowered the weight uh, in the texturing, but I will show you that uh, in a couple of minutes. So now I was prepared for the reconstruction. Our re my reconstruction region is this one, so I need to update it. 
but uh, if you remember I exported my reconstruction region so I can use the same one again so I can bring it in from the reconstruction tab from import and import reconstruction region I have another folder just for it uh, yeah I have multiple reconstruction regions because I was uh, for the tests I I was not just using this small area for the testing I was using different areas also but uh, which one's the main one? This one, reconstruction. Yeah, this is the one. And after this, I just went to the reconstruction tab. Of course, I saved before the reconstruction this. And then I uh, didn't run a CLI script because uh, I was doing this in the middle of the day. So I just run normal detail and I went for lunch. And it actually was pretty quick. Maybe I can... Uh, maybe you can check this i think this is the one that was created so this mesh not enough video memory yes i know i do not show again and when i see, when i see the report here so the depth map calculation time took 59 minutes meshing three hours and 21 minutes and overall pro overall processing time was around five hours and 23 minutes. So, but luckily I have another computer so I could do other work as well. Okay. And so I will disable the type points. Yeah, and this is the, this is the mesh that I actually got. But we are only viewing it in the vertices mode because uh, it has 243 million um, triangles and it's uh, more than my GPU can display at one time. So I simplified the mesh. So I simplified the mesh to 40 million polygons. It's this simplified one. Okay, I will view it in solid view. And this time we will be actually able to see the mesh surface like this. So yeah, there is still some noise visible from the laser scanner, but it is much better than the initial results. So this is the surface. After this mesh was finished, I again saved the project and started the texturing. So first I needed to select all of the scan stations and disable them for texturing. So again, I can just quickly load the image selection. So laser scans. And I just went here for the selected inputs. There are some different values, but uh, I want to enable texturing and coloring set to disable. Okay. So the scan stations are disabled from the texturing. Next, I want to enable, some of the drone shots are all, all already enabled. And I want to also enable the ground images. So I can do that with, uh, again, with image lists. So I can go to the workflow, import image selection, zoom interior. I want to enable them. And uh, I think that I kept the weight in texturing at one for all of these cameras right here. Then I imported the selection for the afternoon like this. So again, I need to enable them and weight in texturing. Yeah, I probably changed some of the weights here but I don't see a reason that I should done it because they are relatively relatively close to the wall. So I will change it to one for all of them like this. And then I select the rest again by using the image selection. And it was from the morning. Yes. Again, I enabled all of them for texturing, but, uh, I lowered the weight. I was, it was only about, let's check this one. 
0.01. So I set the weight uh, in texturing 0.01 for all the sets from the morning because they were further away from the wall. And after all of this was done, I went to the reconstruction tab, I checked the texturing settings if they are what I need. And I set 16K, I set fixed texel size and the optimal texel size. Yeah. And after this, I just click on texture and I had to wait a couple of hours to it to finish. And that's when I got this result. Uh, model textures, let's display this first texture. Yeah, it will take a couple of seconds to load because it's three 16K textures, so that's a lot of data. But we are st starting to see something. I, and you can already see that there are some artifacts here, some blurry. Yeah, I got this. And you can see that some parts are okay, but some parts are looking just terrible. So at this point, I was trying to figure out what to do next. And of course, you could do some fixes with uh, projections in other 3D software, but I wanted to fix everything in reality capture or not everything, but as much as, as can be done. So I decided to make a test. So I used all of the photogrammetry uh, images, all of the sources to create another mesh. And it's this one. Uh, it's the mesh that I called texture. Let me click on it. Let's see. Let's see the report in some settings. Yeah. And here you can actually see that I use the image downscale factor for depth maps to four because I didn't want it to take too much time. So I reconstructed the mesh only from the photogrammetry inputs and then texture it again with the same uh, enabled cameras. And uh, I can actually uh, turn on the color. No, it is actually in sweet mode, but because I don't have any vertex colors, so that uh, that is why the, the uh, point cloud is not colored. So to view the textures, I had to always create renders using the export render tool. But then I decided to, uh, and I make some renders and I noticed that the texture is looking fine. So I decided that I will transfer this texture from this photogrammetry mesh to my laser scan mesh. And for that, I use the texture reprojection tool and it's located right here in the reconstruction tab. So I selected my source model and it should be the texture because I will be transferring the texture from the mesh called texture and my, my simplified mesh. And when I use this reprojection distance, I was still getting bad results, still some artifacts and still some uh, blurry parts of the texture. So I decided to switch this to custom and I increased this custom reprojection distance to 0.5 like this. And then I just clicked on reproject and to display it. So my simplified mesh has two layers, two color layers. This first one is, is the bad texture and this color layer number two is the good texture. So let me load it right now. And this will be the result that you saw in the render that I showed you uh, in the beginning of this webinar. Again, let's wait a couple of seconds to finish the loading. Yeah. And you can already see that it is looking much, much better than the previous texture. And that's it. That, that is how I got my best result so far. I'm not, I am not saying that this is the final result. I will try to take another look at this project, but that's it. Uh, I hope you learned something new. And if you like this kind of content and these, these types of videos, please let us know and we will try to make more. 
So it was Jakub Banko for Capturing Reality. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, have a nice day. Bye.